Hi, I am Dr. Rahi Victory, your host, and welcome to Fertility Factor Fiction. Uh, we have a show every week where we discuss things that are important for patients, either pregnant or trying to get pregnant, and uh, those who are suffering with infertility. And uh, we answer all your questions live. So tonight's show uh, we talked about last week and uh, came out of a post that I responded to online. And I thought it was really important to bring attention to this because there's quite a history behind how patients react once they're pregnant. So it's not all just about getting you pregnant. Sometimes it's about what happens once you're pregnant. And we wanted to make sure that uh, we had everything we needed uh, for you to be as educated as possible and as knowledgeable as possible about uh, your journey. So uh, I was on Instagram and I found someone in the UK who um, I think she must have been a doula or something along those lines. And she was recommending that people delay delivery of their pregnancy till after 42 weeks. Now, um, 42 weeks is uh, unheard of in North America because we all know that it very significantly negatively alters your outcomes and increases your risks. And so we usually stop at 41 weeks. Um, and in fact, there's data to show that you should actually be induced earlier. So I thought I would respond to this and ask the person if they were aware of the data at which point they pointed me to a bunch of different websites and, and posts from other people um, in particular midwifery group in the UK where they said that this is safe and it's fine. And when I pointed to randomized controlled trial data, clearly demonstrating that it wasn't, um, they banned me from their site. So I thought, you know what, uh, we should maybe make a point of this and create a little video on it. So this video is a quick uh, fact or fiction on whether or not it is safer to be induced earlier than your due date or is it okay to wait till later? So there are uh, sort of three or four key trials that I want to quickly review with you. And the main question is, is it safer to be induced earlier, let's say 39 weeks, because that's usually the, the earliest that we tend to induce. And if you're being induced earlier, is it safer? Does it have better outcomes for you and for the baby? And does it have a good sort of appreciation of that event? Do moms like it better when they're induced or do they, do they like it more when it's natural? And so this is really important because we want you to have a really positive journey. We want it to be a good experience for you. And it's very important to a lot of women to be in control of their labor and delivery process. And I totally respect that and want the same thing. But at the same time, we also want to balance that with the need to have a safe and healthy outcome for you and for your baby. And in the past, there was a big push away from doing inductions because of the fact that it increased the risks of uh, cesarean section. But the question is, is that actually true when you do head-to-head -head comparisons? And therefore, is it as safe or safer to deliver the babies a little bit earlier? And then the other part of it is, what happens if you wait? Are there risks to waiting? Are there risks of cesarean section? Are there risks of stillbirth? Is there risks of morbidity, mortality, um, injuries to the infants and so on, and so uh, all, or, or to the moms? And so all of that needs to be looked at really carefully. So the first thing I want to look at is this study um, from Sweden, which was really important for these folks out in uh, Europe, which had posted this because this literally directly contravened what they were saying. So this study was called induction of labor at 41 weeks, which we wouldn't even wait till, versus expectant management and induction of labor at 42 weeks, which is what they were proposing, except they were saying you can go even beyond 42 weeks. So their primary outcome out of 2,760 women 14 different hospitals in Sweden, and this trial was run from 2016 to 2018, was were the infants um, going to be at a higher risk of stillbirth? So obviously, this is the worst possible thing that could happen to anyone, especially if you're a fertility patient, because you've gone through all of this time and effort and, and you know, uh, grief and trauma to get to the point where you're going to have a baby and then a stillbirth, which is a horror for anyone, 
is compounded with the background history of uh, emotional trauma and, and sometimes physical trauma and certainly financial trauma that can go with infertility as well. So the question was, is neonatal mortality, stillbirth, APGAR scores of less than seven at five minutes, and acidosis, um, where the baby is at a much higher risk of having cerebral palsy um, or, or uh, sort of mental dysfunction later, um, intracranial hemorrhages, convulsions, meconium aspiration, mechanical ventilation, all of these things were built into their analysis. So uh, this was what I pointed out to them, and this is what got me stopped on their site, which was that in the group where they uh, went ahead and induced um, there were no stillbirths. And in the group where they did not induce and they waited, there were six stillbirths. So they actually stopped this trial early before it hit even its target endpoint because there was such a huge difference in safety. They said, we cannot continue. It would be unethical to continue. And the Data Safety Monitoring Board actually stopped the study. There was no difference in the number of cesarean sections in this study. Um, and therefore, they concluded that you should not be waiting until 42 weeks. Uh, you should actually be delivering once you're 41 weeks. So this is the first trial that kind of jumped to mind because this is really important for everybody to understand. So it is not okay to wait up to 42 weeks. Once you hit 41 weeks, you should be induced. So there are some people still that say, oh, I want the natural approach. You're actually taking a huge increase in risk of having an adverse outcome, including stillbirth. So then they were saying, well, someone else responded and said, well, what do you think about, you know, their experience? What about pain? And what about the trauma of having to go through the induction? So actually from that same trial, they actually looked at this. So I want to highlight just this one part for you. And I'll just circle this in red because it's the conclusion here, right? So super easy. It says there were no differences in childbirth experience according to CEQ2 or overall childbirth experience assessed with a visual analog scale between women randomly assigned to induction of labor at 41 weeks or expected management until 42 weeks. Overall, women rated their childbirth experience as high. So the idea that you're gonna have a, a bad experience or a negative experience by being induced is simply not borne out by the, um, you know, idea uh, that, you know, it's going to be a negative experience. The reality is it's actually going to be a good experience. And it's the same as it would be when you are being uh, allowed to wait and go naturally. So these women that are being induced are not having a negative experience. They're perfectly happy with their experience. So there's no trauma. There's no significant difference in terms of your pain scale or anything like that. They looked at your own capacity, the perceived safety, the professional support. It all came back being exactly the same. So there's no harm, at least mentally, emotionally, from going through this. Probably the most important trial is this one, which is an American trial called um, the ARRIVE trial. So in the ARRIVE trial, they actually said, let's take a look and see in low-risk women who have never had a baby before, if it's safer to induce them at 39 weeks, or should we wait until uh, 41 weeks? And so they randomized the groups and they said, let's see what happens. So this one I want to spend a, a few seconds on because I think it's really important to look at uh, what happened here. <clears throat> so in this study, um, essentially what they did was they randomized um, a multicenter study. They looked at women that were uh, 38 to 38 weeks and six days. And then they decided to induce them at 39 weeks and zero days to 40 days. So somewhere in that week. Um, and they basically said that they wanted to look at this primary outcome, which was a composite of death and severe neonatal complications, like I just read from the other study. Um, and the secondary thing was what happened to the cesarean section rate? Did it go up because you were being induced or did it actually go down because you were being induced? So they ended up with 3,062 women assigned to labor induction and 3,044 that were assigned to expected management. So this is a big study, over 6,000 people in it. 
So 4.3% of neonates in the induction group and 5.4% uh, in the expectant management group had the primary outcome. Now it just missed significance for demonstrating that the expectant group had a higher risk of these severe complications and stillbirth because the confidence interval is on one. And if it was literally a decimal place lower than that, it wouldn't. But that was the composite outcome. Interestingly, they found that the cesarean section rate, which you can see right here, was 18.6% in the group that was induced and 22.2% in the group that, whoops, in the group that was um, not induced. So I'll just highlight that for you guys so you can see it. And that is right there. So you can see it's 18.6% versus 22.2%. So in other words, you're gonna have a lower cesarean section rate if you are induced rather than waiting for expectant management. What's not shown in the abstract, but is evident later uh, into the article is the fact that they actually showed that there was a higher uh, rate of high blood pressure and preeclampsia in the moms that were in the expected management group uh, and that that was reduced in the group that was induced. So it's actually safer from the maternal perspective and from the fetal perspective, very likely to be induced. And there's actually no benefit to waiting because all you're doing when you wait is actually end up with a higher risk of cesarean section. So it's not beneficial to wait. And I've actually been inducing our IVF patients for, you know, probably 13 or 14 years when they got to 39 weeks. This data just further supports what we were already thinking and doing. The last part is right here, which is another study um, where they actually broke down the individual level data from that previous ARRIVE trial that I just showed you. So you can see here 6,096 women with outcome data, 5,007 met the inclusion criteria for the secondary data analysis. I've highlighted it in yellow here for you. In multivariable analysis, intended labor induction at 39 weeks was associated with a reduced perinatal composite outcome. So 4.1% versus 6% when they reanalyzed it in this study. And this is highly significant. Um, they also showed that with an increase in BMI, you also had an increase in the perinatal outcome. So that was important as well. So this was super, super important because this actually went one step further, showing that it's actually safer for the baby to be induced at 39 weeks rather than wait. So overall, the questions are, is it safer to have your baby at 39 weeks? Yes, it is safer for the baby. Is it safer for the mom to have the baby at 39 weeks? Yes, because you're reducing preeclampsia. Is it gonna lower or increase your risk of cesarean section? It is going to lower your risk of cesarean section according to the largest trial. And then the only thing you're left with is, is it satisfying to moms? And the answer is there's no difference in satisfaction. So given the choice between risk mom and risk baby, or accept lower risks of a cesarean section and negative outcomes, why would anybody choose to wait? I'm happy to hear your feedback. I'm happy to take criticism if you still feel strongly that you should wait. But the reality is the science doesn't support that. The science supports the fact that it is safer to be induced, safer for baby, safer for mom, and no difference in satisfaction rates. So whether you're seeing a doula or you're seeing a midwife or you're going this on your own knowledge or you're seeing an obstetrician, it doesn't matter. The reality is the science is very, very clear here in randomized controlled trials, demonstrating that the safety profile is much stronger for elective induction at 39 weeks than waiting till 41 or 42 or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed that. The fertility factor fiction is a fact that induction of labor at 39 weeks is safer, reduces complications, and is beneficial for both mom and baby. We're going to take your questions live now, and next week we will have another exciting topic, hopefully.